Good day. <clears throat> Good day. This is A&E with another science broadcast for you. This. <clears throat> Good day to you. This is A&E bringing you another science presentation. It is mid-September in 2022, and everybody's busy. Um, if you're watching this, it's because you're lazy good for nothing. You should be working your ass off somewhere. Of course, um, that's not what life is, and it's a terrifying world that we live in. I worked my ass off most of my life, and of course, um, not really. Most people, on the average, throughout their lifetime, work orders, orders of magnitudes harder than I've ever worked in my life. I haven't had to struggle at all, but of course I have. It's just this madness that we have to go through here on this planet. Uh, science is just, um, all it is, is is to make us more comfortable until the inevitable finish. But nothing ever gets accomplished here. Earth isn't going anywhere. We're certainly not going to the stars. The aliens want nothing to do with us. We're absolutely isolated, and many of us feel that way as individuals. Certainly, I've felt that. I think it's a perfectly human feeling to uh, hate God, feel cut off from life, just despise everything around you because it's uh, remorseless and relentless. You're going to die. And then, of course, there's religion, which is simply the opposite. You just, uh, you just give in. You don't have any needs. You just love. Oh, just love. Yeah, that's so easy, isn't it? You, you just do what Jesus said. Do what the Dalai Lama said. Do what Albert Schweitzer does. Just, just, just be like St. Francis of Assisi and talk to the birds and don't take any money and just walk around in poverty. That's called a homeless person. And here in America, homeless people are an amazing an amazing phenomenon. Uh, in my lifetime, there were no homeless people when I was growing up. And yet, if you go back to my parents' generation, they went through the Depression when half the world was homeless. It was... Um, <laughs> and so, what am I trying to say? Uh, that uh, science is going nowhere and doing nothing and offering nobody anything except the same old, same old shit. And that's what you get from science. You worship it because you have no choice. You're raised and brainwashed to worship so-called science. Now, I've stood up and come out against that because I have nothing else to do. I'm an old man getting ready to die, you can tell, right? That's how the world looks at itself. You look at some jackass like Brian Greene or Neil deGrasse Tyson, just someone who's just filthy rich, filthy rich, <laughs> absolutely fucking filthy rich. <laughs> and of course, if you confront them, they will deny it. Oh, oh no, oh no. They because they don't want they don't want you to know that they're fucking filthy rich, but they are because. <laughs> Because you don't stay filthy rich if you tell everybody that you're filthy rich. Unless you're so filthy rich that you can afford bodyguards and politics, political connections, godfather, gunmen, people with gats who just beat your brain to a pulp so that the godfather doesn't have to worry about the, the rabble. Now, in science, we just have this shit situation. What I've done is tried to get into um, the reality side. To, is there anything that we can say about what these morons brought? All they're doing is making money. And the very nicest of them, the very nicest of them, there are some very good broadcasters uh, on YouTube. Uh, Sabina, I think she pronounces it Sabina. Because in Europe, those motherfuckers pronounce every goddamn vowel. Do you know that? In Europe, every fucking vowel. They don't have any. Unless you go to France. And then they don't pronounce half of their letters. And you, and they, they jumble them. You have a grave accent, an acute accent. They don't mean anything. Except to the French, who have some kind of code. But And that's true in every language. 
So uh, I woke up with a burr up my ass, as we say in America. We're ass people here in America. We like to have things up our ass. We shove things in people's ass. You're an asshole. He's an asshole. Stuff it up your ass. Put it where the sun don't shine. Or as my favorite uh, Republican, Hal Thurston, the traitor, loves to say, uh, sit on it and twirl. Harold Kermit Irving Thurston of uh, Paradise, California. He rebuilt his home. This guy, this guy is such a good Republican that even after his home was burned in Paradise, he went right back and built it right on the, right on the same spot. I am praying. I am praying that it burns up. I hope, I hope his home burns again. Of course I don't go as so far as to he's my friend he was my best friend Harold not sure I know his middle name oh yeah Harold Kermit Harold Kermit Thurston T-H-U-R-S-T-O-N I grew up with this guy we met when we were like 11 or something <laughs> at our bus stop we had a bus that picked us up to take us to a junior high then we lost track of each other completely. Well, not completely. Throughout high school, we remained good friends because we lived on opposite sides of the street. But just because of the curses that come down to the people on the surface of the earth, just randomized curses, my two best friends, actually my three best friends, who lived on the same street as I did, lived on the other side of the street. And that street was the dividing line between two school districts. So every morning, on one side of the street, my three friends would come out their front door and head south and climb a mountain. They had to climb a mountain to get to, get to high school. None of us had cars and there were no buses. You fucking walked up the... about a a real good healthy climb for my three friends but in the opposite direction of myself I woke up on the other side of the street went out my front door and went up a mountain going north towards San Francisco those three friends of mine went to San Carlos High and I went to Carl Mont Carl in Carl Mott is taken from Carlos, San Carlos. The city that all three of us lived in was San Carlos. San Carlos is probably the most perfect city that's ever been built in terms of just 1960s America. For a family trying to raise three kids, as my parents were, you could not do better than to live in San Carlos, California. Of course, once again, rich, rich. And the only reason my father got a chance to live, to buy a home in San Carlos, which he was finally ripped off. He was ripped off in his business and he was ripped off on his home. He was ripped off by his kids, all except for me. And he was ripped off by life. My parents went right through it. But the reason that he was able to live in San Carlos is because he was a professional major league baseball player, one of the heroes of America, and one of the greatest of all time. My father was a genuine American hero. A real one. I knew the man very well. The man was absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect man. But to get back to the story, my three idiot friends, and they all ended up being idiots. Well, not Danny. Danny ended up being a paramedic. He probably should have been the governor of the state. It's Danny Chase. But Danny got raped. Danny got raped. His jackass parents, who of course have had their own history. They're both, both of his parents were Irish. 
And his father was a lawyer and a very good man. His mother was an alcoholic, which made her... Alcoholism is a disease. It's a, it's a genetic disorder. And a lot of Irish people are... Al I, it's pre it was prevalent everywhere. But there's a tremendous stigma against alcohol, partially because of alcoholism, which if he wanted to blame God for something, blame him for alcoholism. But don't blame the fucking human being. Of course, it's hard not to because those fucking human beings become intolerable to people around them. But Danny was an only child. And then uh, his parents wanted to have more children. Always a mistake. Always leads to trouble. But what can you do with human instinct? They wanted to have more children. But she couldn't because she was small and something went wrong. She just fucking couldn't have more kids. So they adopted. They just went right down just like. And basically, if you were adopting a dog, uh, they got a, a, a semi-wild pit bull. And, and put this, this motherfucker was actually from criminal. It, he had to have come from criminal background. He was a brute. He was just born immensely strong one of those kids that just is born with just sinewy just and thick he was a very muscular very powerful young man who ended up uh fucking his life to shreds because he was an idiot had no intelligence whatsoever he was a brute whereas danny was a very highly refined very thin, very small, red-headed, freckled geek. Not much different. I, I'm about halfway between those two things, but Danny was a very good person whose life was destroyed by his own parents because they brought this... I wish I could have... If I could have, I would have just clubbed Mike to death. If I could have gotten away with it, looking back, just, just take... There's nothing wrong with him as, as a human. He was fine. He ended up committing grand larceny, but that's that's due to the pressures of society. All of this is to tell you that life has changed here at A&E, and I'm not going to be doing my typical science broadcasts any longer, because um, I don't see this going anywhere. I don't, I, there's, nobody is interested in this. Everybody's off on their own tangent. I'm still going to try. I'm contacting whomever I can to see about uh, broadcasting whatever this is and whatever way I explain it, whatever the hell I'm doing. <laughs> uh, I think this is the most powerful vector on the face of the earth right now. I and I alone am proceeding along in the correct direction. And every leader, every pioneer feels alone. And we'll get megalomanic and show signs of stress and lash out. And uh, then nine out of ten of those are simply psychologically disturbed with no real substance behind them. And I, I could be one of those, but I'm not. So I'm going to continue these broadcasts. But um, time's running out. It, I project and I say time's running out for the world. That, of course, is always true. <laughs> oh, well, and it's accelerating toward a cliff that we just don't know how soon we're going to go off the cliff but there's no question we're going off of a cliff very very soon i keep hoping that it'll be next year but it never is it hasn't been for 2000 years people have either been fearing or praying for the end of the world for since the beginning of time because this is some kind of grotesque experiment that just went a foul and a miss. However, I happen to know the inside scoop on the great creator's plan, and I'm risking my life by telling you this, but um, all of this futility and agony and misery and just pointlessness, just futility, um, is, is, is strictly a cover-up for the real plan. And most people are not real. Most people are doomed to die and and we'll be glad when they're gone later on in thousands, tens of thousands, millions of years from now. 
nobody's ever going to remember 99% of the people who've ever lived on Earth because they only have one purpose, to support people like me. I'm a real person. Now, that it's tragic, isn't it? Yeah, I embrace that tragedy, and I, I don't give a fuck. I, I don't give a fuck what you think. That's very important in this world. You must not ever care what someone else thinks. Because they don't think. All they do is react emotionally like animals. They look at you, and they wonder if they can get something from you, or if you're trying to get something from them. That's it. That's 99% of humanity. Is, is there, There's no love on this planet. Don't ever kid yourself. Love is usually sex. That's what, that's what most people mean by love. And as for the love of Jesus or the love of the Buddha, you could shove that fucking love up your ass. Maybe Jesus had it, yes. But nobody around Jesus ever did. That's in the Bible. Everybody betrays a man who loves. I am a man who loves. I know that for a fact. You don't have to believe that. Well, because you won't. You can't believe that. But um, nobody can stop me from telling the truth. But as for caring about what you think, I know what you think, which is nothing. You don't think. So I'm trying to get attention for something, but um, without uh, without a contact, this just this is just hot air. All I'm doing is just making noise. I don't mind. I, it is for a purpose, but <laughs> if no one's interested in your circus, your circus is gonna fold because nobody's coming to your circus, kid. Nobody's watching you. Nobody cares what... The children can die of neglect just by not... If they find that the children around them are getting love, and they know, but they're not, if they're systematically or just by oversight, not given love, they'll lose their minds. They'll lose their minds. And they also can become dangerous. Yeah, very dangerous, like murderously dangerous if they don't get the attention that they need when others are. It, it could easily happen. It, not myself. I You got to remember something about me. Whatever I say about what I might do or I, in the way of being a worldly flawed person, not a chance. Whenever I do use myself as an example, again, because I'm compassionate and love and have empathy, I am a real human being. But most of the people around me are not really fully human. They're mostly animals. But uh, what I do when I project the truth as I know it, um, I'm actually trying to help people. Nobody else is. That paramedic who tries to help you, he's getting paid for it. That doctor who took the tumor out, you don't need to thank him personally. He didn't do you any favors. And the lawyer that got you $100,000, he's not a great, wonderful human. He's an animal trying to survive. You got something out of it, we're all supposed to rejoice. See, we communicate with each other through emotions. But emotions are absolutely pointless in reality. And that's the introduction to today's lecture series. We're going into a new series called Real Reality. We're going to actually do the real thing. And this is going to be a brutal tearing to shreds of everything around me that's leading you astray, which is everything around you. But I'll be showing you why you're being taken to the cleaners and why you're not going to heaven and why you're not being fulfilled. Uh, why all the religious prophets were right. Dalai Lama's right. Jesus is right. Um, but nobody around you believes in that. All they do is say they do. So to protect themselves, that's all they're doing. 
But as for real reality, nowhere. And, and nowhere is it more conspicuously absent than in top flight science. Your scientists are absolute motherfucking assholes. And in this series, as I show you what real reality really is, I'll be exposing these charlatans. I'll be pulling down the pants of Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'll be kicking the ass of Brian Green. And I'll be taking the rest of these shitheads um, right out in the open street and just kicking their asses around the block while the children watch. And they deserve it and they deserve worse. They deserve to be executed, just like our politicians and religious leaders. <laughs> it's really only one. Our religious re leader is Satan, not mine, yours. But you see, that's the difference. Whenever I say we, that does not include myself. If it's negative, I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about you. This has to come down to you, and we're going to get into it. I keep saying that this has to come down to you in order to get the answers that you need. But the negative side also comes down to you. You are the guilty party. Everything the Bible says that you were trained to call bullshit and hogwash at fairy tales and for geeks and nerds and losers. Uh, I'm sorry, men who have little tiny dicks. Those are the ones who believe in religion and God and Jesus, okay? But people like me. Men with little tiny penises. This is really, really how American males think. All the way to the, up the list. That we're trained to. You see, I broke out of it. I don't have to. But I love making fun of stuff. And I do have to live among these cannibals. But I really don't like my fellow Americans very much. At the very best, the top of the list, the ones that I actually can hang with and smile with, they're retarded. But I've also learned some compassion because I suspect that a lot of these retards and just, just morons that are just trying to live, they've learned, they've learned don't ever, ever express the truth that you actually know too openly. Because uh, if it actually is the truth, you're going to get something shoved up your ass. You don't want to be sharing, if Jesus is the truth, then don't say a word about Jesus. If you think Buddha is the truth, or Einstein is the truth, or you have the truth, don't share it. Because it'll get you killed. What you do is what Brian Greene, Neil deGrasse Tyson... Uh, David Attenborough, what all these uh, jolly souls are doing, first of all, all they're doing is making money, and that's the only motive behind what they do. But they're using science. Because science does have an avenue into the truth, and they fucking know it. And if they don't know it, Satan, who is controlling them, does. And they are under the group mind. All right, coming up on 25 minutes. That's enough venting. I'm going to upload this, and I'm going to leave it out on YouTube so everyone can see what a maniac I am and how I'm trying to uh, corrupt uh, the children and, and uh, interfere with commerce, and also I'm threatening the United Nations with dynamite. This is a miserable, horrifying, backstabbing world, and uh, you're being lied to every day. There is no real war in Ukraine. And nobody should feel anything about that goddamned war. And, the, and no, the blacks are not being emancipated. And no, the gays are not wonderful. And no, your president doesn't do anything. And no, your vote doesn't count. And no, Jesus is not anywhere. Okay? There's no... All religious people are fakes. The, here's the... All political people are fakes, you know that. All religious people are fakes, you probably suspected that. But what nobody at all suspects anywhere, except I've got this 
dead on target. Your scientists are satanic, okay? They are 1984. They are Skynet. That's why I began this particular video by telling you that you should be working. You shouldn't be watching this. You're watching me? Well, I might be Michio Kaku, or I might be Leonard Suskind. Um, if you're watching me as if I were one of them, well, you're a criminal and you're a sinner and you're going to burn in the law. You're going to burn in the hottest hell forever because how come you're not working your ass off? This is what I was raised with. I swear to God, I am not exaggerating. The religion that I was raised with, everyone around me too, both at San Carlos High and at Carl Mott, <laughs> and at Stanford, and at UC Berkeley, it's the same, exact same thing. You are, you're an asshole. You should be working your ass off. And let's see. Um, I don't know. There's more that has to do with shit and the hole in the ass. This is how Americans think. But as for anything to do with God or heaven or truth or reality, uh, no, that's what gets you killed by your fellow Americans. And that's coming up on 30 minutes. That's enough. I'm not going to be presenting science to you any longer because science is satanic. From now on, I'm going to be presenting to you reality and then show you how science twists that reality right up your ass. Einstein, as much as I admire him, be sure that you understand what Einstein actually accomplished, okay? It was a stupid asshole trick. He performed a, an underhanded trick of mathematics, and he did not improve science. He crippled it with his goddamn four tensor calculus. The greatest of the scientists? Absolutely the greatest of the scientists. And he will remain that. But do you know what he is the king of? That is, the scientist. Yeah, Albert Einstein is the greatest scientist, right? I think he is. That means he's the greatest Satanist. And in the, you may think that that just is like oil and water. That's because you've been brainwashed, severely brainwashed. Your wires have been crossed. You probably won't get out of it either, and probably I won't be able to uncross those wires. But I motherfucking am going to try to uncross those wires for you. I'm going to get in your face. I'm going to bitch slap you. I'm going to goose you. I'm going to elbow you and then crank you one right in the solar plexus, gouge your eyes out. And give you a left hook, <laughs> uppercut, <laughs> and then a bolo. Oh my God, not the bolo. <laughs> I am not a violent person. I'm not going to do any of those things. But you definitely need to be woken up, and I've told you before, I'm your last hope. I am not shitting. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love to laugh. I laugh at everything now. I'm getting old. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I am not. <laughs> I am. I am fucking not shitting you, you asshole. We'll be right back. <laughs>